Chapter 894, 12.05 a.m. East Blue Standard Time. Hello, everyone. Check your watch. It's 12.04, and it's time for the podcast. Oh, no. It's 12.05. Oh, I am the it. best guy ever, and he's hypocrite. That's true. That's who I am. Mm-hmm. In, inside and outside, of, more metaphorically and figuratively. Uh, uh, w- welcome, everyone. New chapter. I feel like we just talked about the last one. Maybe because that discussion of that chapter lasted a fucking thousand year Reich as the same I think goes. I think it's 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 because the, it, we mm-hmm. keep like our our podcast discord our pod yeah. discord a vibrant community is, everybody is, is, join is in now the like below. constantly talking about one piece and it's like yeah, yeah. I'm always I'm always seeing new things to talk about in there what a change when I was a kid and I think a lot of people in the discord uh, feel this way it's so like when you're a kid reading one piece or even you know like in high school middle school it doesn't matter college as well like nobody around me gave a shit about one piece like Ben my brother read it a little bit but I had nobody to talk to uh, and so I just quietly obsessed over one piece and like would rant to my parents and friends occasionally about how great it was uh, and then as I got older I finally met I don't know, I guess it's really you, or like the first person I've met who really cares as much as I do, more or less, and like reads it every week. Ben Ben will catch up like once every couple of years and we can talk about it, but um, yeah. And, and now we've got a little community where we can talk any of the f- fucking time we want. We've assembled a bunch of people who really give a shit and read week to week. It's it's, it's crazy, man. It's, it's weird for me as well, because mm-hmm. I, before I talked to you about One Piece, like before mm-hmm. we did the the podcast, we would talk about One Piece every week anyway. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. before I talked to you, I didn't even like think of anything in One Piece as being bad. I uh, you introduced me to <laughs> it being fallible. Oh, I was no. like, oh, I, I guess that that's kind of bad because I didn't yeah. know. I wasn't. I was. I was. I was a little baby boy, and I just talked about it with and my now, brothers. And now uh, we'll we'll get things. Now like I'm last truly where you viciously, savagely attacked innocent Katakuri who did <laughs> nothing wrong. How dare you? How dare you do? I I thing? stand by my initial <laughs> feelings there. I don't think it was unwarranted, but you know, uh, I, uh, I I I mean, uh, I changed my mind during the course of the podcast. That's true, but as we talk more, I and everyone could tell I was in a highly emotional state talking about the episode. As time has passed, it's been you know around a week or so since then. I have felt my passion cool a bit, and while I love the idea of Katakuri just as much, I do think there are definite narrative flaws, like in the way that he was kind of characterized up to this point, and his sudden respect for Luffy. While it does make sense, like I'm not taking back anything I said before, and I was quite clear. It's entirely possible that I'm very biased because the issues presented are something are very personal ones to me that I jive with in a huge way. Um, but like, yeah, some of the stuff like how he suddenly respects Luffy so much despite Luffy not really doing anything himself. We commented on them then, and they're still there. But uh, you know, we'll, we'll get to those this chapter. There, there's certainly more of that to, yes. to see. But, but first, let's begin bef- with before the cover we page. before we get mm. to that, we need to talk about the the cover page. Indeed, which. Indeed. Um, it's the Tontata boys, and they're going with the king, uh, I forgot his name, to the king Riku. Riku. King Riku. Yes, from Kingdom Hearts. This is what happened to him. <laughs> he got very old. <laughs> <laughs> it's he been so island. long since Kingdom Hearts 2. <laughs> oh, you're right. It's been a coon's age. Uh, he's... Yeah, so this is actually... Okay, well, here's a little bit of extra lore. So, yeah, the Tontata boys are going to be his bodyguards at Reverie. And that's cool, because we know these guys are very sneaky, very fast, and very strong. We know they're, they're actually quite strong. But, uh, okay, real point here. We know how the Tenryubito feel about pirates. And these guys have just become an official pirate crew. Yeah, uh, will it's, that not it's interesting. Be I, thought, of, I thought it was yeah. weird. I, I, I am mm-hmm. assuming... Yeah, the, they're like privateers in this instance, but it's like the Shichibukai are basically yeah. privateers, and I Wish guess they're sure, okay, sure. kind of. Well, they, yeah, yeah. I mean, these are if I suppose you could kind of call these like King Riku's privateers, like you know, like I think the, I think the, King the... Riku is going to get mm-hmm. shit for this. He's going to say, "Why are you allied with a pirate crew?" And it's Agreed. obviously because Agreed. the Tontata want to be with Luffy in his pirate crew mm-hmm. army thing. But they're also yep. like uh, friends with the kingdom, so there's there's the the pirate link. 
to yeah. to Luffy in in the, the kingdom, and he's like, I don't give a shit. I these guys are a part mm. of the Luffy thing. They 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 have to be pirates. They're cool. And then dude, and then Vivi are... will be like, Oh, dude, you know Luffy? That's uh, fucking sick. I was just gonna say they're definitely gonna hook up with Luffy uh, with with Vivi, who we know is a pirate sympathizer for sure. And then the whole um, reverie is just going to be like, you know, everyone say, oh, I know Luffy. And it's like Neptune comes <laughs> up. It's like, oh, we're all like Luffy fans. And then, then there's the guy, the one guy is like evil. And he a, says, a, a, a how dare Wapple you like a there. guy that's Walpole's going to be there. He's not going to be too fond of that Oh, shit he's going to be pissed. You know, he's going to be very, very furious. I am so excited to see all those character interactions. And especially now that incredible. the Tontata, because the Tontata people are going to be hit. They're going to, mm -hmm. in this way, I think prompt mm -hmm. that discussion because they're pirates. You know, I, I've been thinking... Th th okay, I, I just wanted to comment. I said this before, but, like, guys, think about this for a second. So, you know how we've been saying up to this point how there's, like, all these cover arcs are, have followed a very similar pattern where it's just, like, goofy shit's happening, like, we see what characters are up to, and then, like, at the very end, for, like, one or two of these final pages, like, something immediately becomes, like, into focus. Like, oh, shit, Bartolomeo was attacking a village that was controlled by the fucking red hair pirates. Oh, fuck. What's gonna happen with this shit? Um, and now, and now, like, the thing with this is that Leo and the boys are going to reverie with, uh, King Leo, or Dold. Was the name King Riku Dold the Third or something? Whatever. The, the king of Dressrosa and shit. So, like, they're, now we know they are going to be relevant in the future. They are going to be at reverie. And this makes me wonder. So, up to this point, I'd been thinking for a while what reverie is actually going to be, like, in, in narratively, in the context of the story. It's been hinted at for a very long time. And it's obviously being built up in an interesting way. And my personal thought was like, I was wondering, what is the relevance of this going to be regarding the Straw Hats? You know, because everything eventually has to impact the Straw Hats for us really to care about it. And I think what's going to happen is the Straw Hats will not be there, but Reverie is going to be a huge event with all the characters that we've met throughout the story being there. You know, all like the ones who it's appropriate for them to be there. Um, um, and I think Blackbeard is going to attack. And there's going oh. to be some, like, gigantic cataclysmic event that happens at Reverie. I think that's going to be Blackbeard's big explosion into the scene of One Piece. Because he's, like, he's a Yonko right now, uh, but he's going to, like, rise above that. He's just going to be, like, the guy, it's, like, just ripping the world I, apart. All right, there's, there's, mm -hmm. I'm, do, I'm not sure about that. It seems uh -huh. like a big, uh, like, dangerous thing. That's just a crazy theory. There's been no hints, it's, but something's well, going to happen I mean, for sure. I think the thing Blackbeard is doing at the moment is he's going mm -hmm. to kill Dragon or something because he found the Revolutionary Army base and there's going to be a true. big, like, thing with that. Like, he killed, and he killed Luffy's brother. He's going to kill his dad. It's like, oh, shit, big, Dude, how sick would big just, like, enemy a, a, rival like, villain. Ever, ever since the Blackbeard and Ace fight, like, that was, like, the coolest thing ever. And I love those kind of, like, extremely important, narratively relevant like fights that happen just away from the straw hats like the the blackbeard ace fight is like the coolest thing that ever happened in one piece it's so fucking sick and it took us hundreds of chapters to find out exactly how important it was but even back then we knew what a big deal it was you know ace's entire uh, role in the story up to that point had been you know an important member of the whitebeard pirates who was just on a quest to find blackbeard then he finally finds him you know, uh, we're told in the manga, like, this will be the event that leads to, like, massive ramifications later, which is, you know, the big war, Whitebeard fucking dying, uh, the Whitebeard pirates being broken up, basically, Blackbeard rising to power as one of the Yonko. Man, just, I love I, those kinds of things, and Reverie, yeah. I think, is going to be an event like that, and I cannot um, wait. Yeah, maybe not with Blackbeard. I, I mean, the only maybe reason not, I'm not. I'm not, not sure about Blackbeard being there is because mm -hmm. of the the dragon thing, and also, sure. I'm not sure what the I can't remember what the reverie has like been hinted at what is going to happen there, aside from mm -hmm. a gathering. Because if All we, we know, knew like what yeah, the ahead, what it's for, mm -hmm. we might be able to guess that there's something that will go wrong or so, something something that will, you know. Because all these people who like mm -hmm. Luffy, and then there's people who don't like Luffy, and it's like there's going to be a clash of some kind. I'm not sure. I'm I'm just you know. Well, Reverie. Uh, I'm just looking up the wiki. I, I had forgotten this uh, a little bit, but the Reverie happens every four years at Marie Joie or Marie Jo or whatever, and it's it's just the meeting of all the kings of all the nations that are members of the world government. I think just to like dictate policy, or possibly just to like that they're just like told what to do by the world government, because you know the the kings are not independent. They are basically ruled by the world government, um, 
so I don't really, I don't know what kind of a say they have, but it's some important meeting of all these guys, and we know that, for example, like, I feel like legislative things happen. For example, we know that uh, Queen Otohime, before she got, you know, killed, uh, she went to Reverie to partition them to allow uh, Fishman Island to become a member state of the world government so that they could, you know, do all the things that that would entail and, and be a recognized nation and whatnot. And the reason, and the fact that they have not made that happen is why they had to ally themselves with first the Whitebeard Pirates and then, um, you know, currently the Big Mom Pirates until recently another sort of in Luffy camp. Uh, but nonetheless, it's just going to be a huge fucking event where something incredible is going to happen, something amazing. And we really, we really don't know what's going to happen. But yeah. I don't know. Maybe Dragon will show up. Maybe Blackbeard will show up. Like who the fuck knows? Uh, it, we can only speculate. But it's going to be huge. It's going to be incredible. Yeah. I, I, I feel like if it's at Marriage Wire, uh, mm-hmm. they, they, it, it, uh, uh, I, I don't want to mm-hmm. like uh, uh, predict anything because I really have no yeah. idea. But I just don't feel yeah, like don't a, a cataclysmic event where lots of people die will happen because that feels like end of series thing. This might be like more to do with like the secret weapon. Well, uh, d- or, don't or forget, something. don't forget, we're getting down to the last, like, six yeah. or five years of One Piece, and I think we're relatively due for a giant game-changing event again. We've had, like, three major arcs where the only thing that's really happened is Luffy, you know, like, he beat Doflamingo, was basically the major event that, like, weakens Kaido to set up for the Kaido battle. That's really, like, it's all been set up, basically, everything that's happened in the New World up to this point for, like, the Big Mom confrontation happening now and the Kaido confrontation that's to come soon. Um, so, I don't know, man. I, yeah. I think something gigantic happening, like, there's been so much build-up to this event. I, I mean, who could say? Who, who can really say? We'll just have to wait and see. Yeah. But well, anyway, that's page one. Page, not chapter. even page... Well, it's page one, but not even the first panel of the chapter. So let's, yeah. let's just go look at that now. How silly. Okay, um, I'm looking. So finally in the chapter, we're getting a flashback with Luffy and Rayleigh, mm-hmm. and he's, he's learning his... Um, his observation hacky. He's got a blindfold on. He's being beaten over the head with a stick for doing it wrong. Kenbun Shoku hacky. I always forget that one. Yes. I, I, I like Rayleigh's face at the mm-hmm. bottom left of this first one. This first, it's a good first one. Page. It's, he's so devastated that Luffy knocked over his dinner. This is the most cataclysmic event. <laughs> this is the this is the biggest expression he's had, and it's about it's like my pork chops, my my stew. <laughs> you knocked it's it over. Delicious stew. Oh, he probably put all the delicious seasonings in there. That's fucked up. Um, but I mean, this is, so we're just we're just going back. We're just continuing to to beat this uh, you know observation hockey training learning growing thing, which is fine. Which is fine. That's certainly the relevant thing to the Luffy's fight happening right now. But. Uh, I mean, this actually kind of remember or helped me remember. So I was like, the first time we saw uh, what would later be known as observation hockey was, you know, in Skypea. With the, it, it, it just manifested as like an awareness of living things around you and like an ability to just like sense where things are, as opposed to what we've kind of been lumping in it. At least I have of like the ability to see the future, which is just like an extremely developed version of of this ability. Yeah, I'm I'm wondering because mm-hmm. it. it I have been thinking, oh yeah, like what is observation hacky if not yeah. already seeing the future? And it it's is a just little... knowing things that are behind you. You don't have to use right. your eyes. It's, it's exactly. The, uh, but I mean, it's it's a little weird considering like the way that we saw it. Or, like the first time Luffy used it basically uh, in the New World was when like he shows up at uh, you know Shabmoni Archipelago. You know he's been away from two years training, and like the uh, uh, what, what what are the things called the. What are the big Kuma robots called again? Oh, pacifistas. The pacifista just, like, shoots a bunch of lasers at him, and he just, like, dodges it. And, like, okay, sure, his awareness was heightened, but it sure seemed like it was kind of like he knew where the attacks were going to be, like he could see the future. It, there's a little bit of a weird distinction going on here. You know what I mean? It's I, like, think, I think what it is vague. is that it's it's seeing around you without using your eyes, but also, like, yeah, having predictive things, like... What's the most likely thing he's going to do next? Ah, I think he's going to do this. And, and just to, to, to know, like, what to mm-hmm. expect, mm-hmm. Um, which is different from seeing the future a few seconds ahead. Um, yeah. It's, it's a very yeah. blurred line, and it's hard to, like, it's probably, like, easier to understand with Japanese words 
than it is in English. Yeah. Well, maybe. I, I, the concepts, I think, are going to be roughly the same. Yeah. Uh, this fucking hockey bullshit, man. Oh, what did you, what were you thinking, Oda? This is so weird and complicated. Like, I'm I'm putting up with it. I'm, I'm chugging along, doing my well, best it, to understand. I, I think it's confusing because there's, like, this idea that it's a level up, whereas it may just be mm-hmm. very strong, like, categories. It's like, you can see the future a bit. Yeah. But some guys can see the future a few seconds ahead, or, like, even five seconds ahead. Mm-hmm. And it's like they have an overwhelming advantage over somebody who just sort of knows how to, to see the future. Yeah, that seems roughly correct. I don't know. Well, in any case, I, I think we get the gist. Yeah. Uh, the that, point is, Luffy, uh, fucking, what are you doing knocking over that lunch? Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> so Rayleigh beats the shit out of him, as he yeah. deserves. And then we get this thing about, like, hockey being part of, like, empathy as well. Sensing oh, rage, right. sensing this, emotion. This is this, weird. I, I don't think this is color obs- observation hockey. I think this is, like, hmm. uh, again, that sort of, like, uh, the Goldie Roger uh, Momonosuke sort of, like, mm-hmm. the, you can hear the voice of all things that Luffy s- has some of. Right, so, yeah, like, we saw um, that. We saw that. Luffy has this power, and it hasn't been explicitly stated what it is, and it seems like even Rayleigh doesn't even know... He can't recognize it in Luffy, but like Goldie Roger had it, which is why yep. he understood yep. the the poneglyphs. And Momonosuke has uh, like a very strong version of it because mm-hmm. he could hear the elephant, and Luffy could also sort of hear the elephant. I think. Yeah, and that's it's... right. That's right. So I think this is like what I think is that the color observation hacky is like uh, predicting things and and seeing mm-hmm. the future a little bit. And what Luffy is is like understanding emotions and people. It's like well. You know, that's the way he's always lived. He doesn't know it's a special ability. He thinks it's just normal. So, like, he when he yeah. says, it depends on what kind of person they are, it's like, if I know if I know the guy, it'll be easier to predict. Like, his hacky is, like, emboldened in some way by, yeah. like, knowledge of the person's emotions or whatever. And, I, I mean, guess. we've been talking up to this point. Like, last chapter, you know, we talked about how important, like, uh, or how much... Katakuri is like allows his emotions and his like desire to be perceived uh, a certain way like dictates his actions and like his whole character has been set up in such a way that like this whole, like remember uh, um, basically from the start he's been set up to be like a very emotionally manipulated kind of guy and like uh, everything like before when Luffy exposed him and like his shameful you know donut eating thing lying on the ground and stuff like there was a real thing there about like Luffy shook his emotions he like shook his his, you know, emotional resolve or whatever to fight. So, like, th- at that point then, it seemed like that was going to be the tack that Luffy used in order to beat this guy if he was going to. And now it kind of seems like they're coming back to that in kind of this weird way. And, and if you're looking at the top of page six, at least on Manga Stream, it says, he says specifically, like, despite it being part of observation hockey, it seems you're quite adept at sensing emotions of living things, even though I doubt you're aware. So, like, he's saying that this is sort of a subset of observation hockey, but clearly this is that thing that, like, Gold Roger has, Luffy has, you know... Uh, yeah, maybe Momonosuke it's like a, you put, mm. like, talent points into a, in a sub mm. uh, thing of, of observation they're, they're hockey. All sort of most people underlying... go down the, yeah. you know, the most efficient road. This one is the middle Indeed. one. He went off Indeed. on the branch, and it's like, ah, oh, it's situational, but it can be useful, and it's like... Exactly. It's like, it's like a skill tree... Uh, you've got like your your strength skill tree, your magic skill tree, and your dex skill tree. And observation hockey is like the dex skill tree, and it's like there's a couple of branching paths. You can put all your you can under the under the the umbrella of the dex skill tree, or in this case observation hockey, you can put your stats into this like future predicting stat, which Luffy has a little bit of. But there's another path you can invest in as well that is this like emotionally sensing one. And it seems like Luffy is specking more towards that. Yeah, that well he's not deliberately be. specking. He just I, like I know, is, I know. Is, this, inclines this, I know towards it's not that. a real video game. Come on, I know. <laughs> uh, yes. Right. Except buy the new One Piece video game where you can literally do this, though. Oh, wouldn't that be sick, though? What if that One Piece MMO that we've all been dreaming of finally happens and you can do this shit? <gasps> One Piece MMO would never work, ever. Because well, nobody, nobody wants to be a nameless pirate. They want to be yeah, a guy that exists. Yeah, everyone would argue... Everyone would want like a, a uh, an Ope Ope no Mi style like Uber Devil Fruit that makes them the super oh, yeah. special and, like, coolest like, it, one. Nobody would be al- either. Everyone is allowed to have a Devil Fruit or nobody is. And then how do you determine mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. who can have duplicates? 
It's like Ugh, it'd, be, it'd be a nightmare. <laughs> it would be it would be kind of like a, an experimental cool new thing if there was like one fruit with a power, and mm. the player who finds it and eats it has that power until their player character is killed, and then they and have to make a new character somewhere else. Yeah, yeah it'll I mean, spawn hey, somewhere yeah. else, and they have to I've make a new worse character. Ideas. Like, like like the it's permanent death. Like it's like a roguelike MMO. Oh, that'd be that'd be fucking brutal. <laughs> That'd be seriously. <laughs> there, there are savage. modes in certain MMOs where that happens. I've seen. Oh yeah. People they 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 play the whole game on super hard mode, and mm. they get like more strength and like growth stats, but oh, then yeah, okay. if they die, they're dead, and then they lose everything they've done. If you die in the game, you die for real. Yeah. Okay. Well. Anyway. Um, yeah, I, that, that pretty much sums up this section at least. We've, we've pretty much covered this flashback. I, I just want to say that the yeah. Luffy uh, with his like um, now he's he's thinking about categories the, in the present. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, I don't like the way his hair looks. I think it looks wrong. I think it looks like a uh, fairy tale. And his I his hair has never looked this way before, and I don't know exactly why it well, does now. The, I think the what the reason I guess is is the, he going the super back, saiyan the or background, something? The background is is black, so his right. hair doesn't he can't be black as well. But I don't know. They could have had an, an an outline instead. He looks like he looks like a fucking fairy tale character. At least, like the hair does. What? I don't I don't get it. Like I thought that was weird at first, and I just kind of ignored it. But it's definitely strange. Um, but whatever. Like what what is being implied here with this weird hair that definitely looks different than normal? I it's, do not understand. What is in being in, what's being implied is that there's like a like an understudy working on the comic, and he's like, <laughs> I, I like drawing hair like this, and he's drawing it, and it's like, oh, like, uh, yeah, sure, fucking man, oh, shit. Well, I, in any I case, hate One Piece. One Piece sucks, <laughs> yeah, dude. It's the worst. <laughs> um, and uh, so Katakuri uh, puts uh, his fist into the category of trying to punch Luffy. Uh, yes. But Luffy, here he is predicting things, and he's dodging. So he's uh, here he is, like, using this stuff. And by the way, in that flashback, Rayleigh specifically says, like, this isn't something that you could learn to do in just two years. Like, this whole predicting the future thing. Oh, yeah. Y you know what? This is giving me a little bit of hope. Because you know how I was saying before, like, last time of, Oda, you got to give me a reason to believe that Luffy will win. you got to give me something. Because, again, we will see as we go further, continually, in every single way, Luffy is inferior to Katakuri in every single category, except the one thing is this weird, like, emotional understanding thing. And here is Ray, like, confirming, like, Luffy, in just two years, you are not going to be able to learn to predict the future. And, I mean, maybe it has been more than two years, and now he's, like, fighting Katakuri. But, like, so maybe in, like, the heat of battle he'll develop it. But I no, feel like I, they're setting I, I up think, for this turn. Yeah, he's uh -huh. setting up for, for Luffy. Well, it's, it's like to... To mm -hmm. give like um, or to to heighten the tension, like can he mm -hmm. do it? He's the main character, but can he win? Yeah. Like to to imply that he can't do it in two years, and maybe you'd suddenly miraculously do it in two years. But I think, mm -hmm. uh, at least I hope, that this fight will go, like um, you know, the way that we hoped it would, in that yeah. Luffy would lose, but he would mm -hmm. lose really well, and exactly, Katakuri would also be out of the fight and unable to help. Uh, I'm just, the rest of the the Big Mom pirates attack his friends. They'd both there be was, out. There was, a, at the end of Yu Yu Hakusho, um, during the final arc, it's something called, like, the Three Kings arc or something. It's, it's the end of the series. And uh, Yusuke uh, spends some time in the demon world fighting against, like, the three biggest demon guys. And, and there's a tournament at the end between uh, just, like, the most powerful demons. There's two of the demon kings are left. One of the three died. Um, and, like, there's a big tournament to decide who the next demon king is going to be. And Yusuke enters... Uh, and, like, the other two Demon Kings Ender, one of them is called Yomi. And Yusuke fights Yomi in this tournament, and Yusuke actually loses his final big battle of the entire series against Yomi. But the thing is, though, Yomi was so unbelievably overwhelmingly powerful, no one even thought that Yusuke would stand a chance. But Yusuke, like, manages to put up an incredibly good fight against this guy who is so overwhelmingly strong again. And, like, Yusuke, he loses the fight. Yusuke straight up loses. But he hurts Yomi so much. You know, he, he's able to wear him down so much that in the next round of the tournament, the guy who Yomi fights is able to easily defeat him because Yusuke has fucked him up so bad from the last fight. And, like, that is exactly how I want this fight to go. 
I want Luffy to lose. I'm, I'm just looking at the next page, page eight. I'm just watching Luffy trying things and getting fucking dismantled. He tries to rush in for a punch against Katakuri. He himself gets punched savagely in the face. It is brutal by this advanced, like, block technique hockey. He just tries to block a punch from Katakuri, and we visibly see his arm tingle in pain. He can't even block him without suffering damage. Like, he is overwhelmingly being defeated right now, but... And, I, and he should and needs to lose this fight. At this point, I'm certain of it. He needs to straight up lose it unless he does something weird with, like, the emotion thing. That's the one angle that I'll accept. I, I but really even if his, he loses... His, yeah, I really love ahead. his face at the bottom there with the bulging eye. Yeah, I see that. I mean, he's just... He's taking he's, pain he's while he tries to so block these blows. He's so fucked. But he, is, is, so he fucked. is managing to block things. I think this is, like... You know, mm -hmm. he, 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 the, the, the future sight thing is coming in handy in parts. Like, he's not taking mm -hmm. every single hit. And he doesn't have to dodge every single one. He can block a couple of them. But it's like... Mm -hmm. I mean, at the end of the the, the chapter, we, we see his, his last-ditch attempt. And yeah. we don't know what that's going to be. Um, so Luffy I guess, needs... depending on how cool that is, uh, that will win or yeah. lose. But, like, it's... Even... No matter what that technique is, that's in the context of, for, like, hours, he's been getting fucked up by this guy. Just over and over and over again. Got his fucking organs ripped out and shit. Oh yeah, the conceit of the chapter is like, we're, we're, we're counting down the last few hours until That's right. Luffy's supposed to meet up. So this is mm -hmm. the end of the fight. This is the end We're of finally getting there. At long everything's last. coming up together. And you know, but, I, I, I remember thinking last chapter, I was so scared with the last page of that chapter. You know, it was super cool just seeing Katakuri like facing off, you know, fists up, putting up his dukes against Luffy. Like, I was scared that it was going to be some, like, retarded hand-to-hand, -hand, like, one-on-one -on -one fight where they, they, like, weren't going to use their powers or something, and they were just like, no, we're going to be men and fight. But that would have been, like, the stupidest fucking thing of all time. Uh, so luckily that has not happened. And instead, like, he's, he's still going at it. Like, frankly, all the ways that Katakuri has, like, damaged Luffy in this fight, like, why isn't he just using his spear and just killing him? He, like... There's no good reason that he hasn't just killed Luffy at this point, because he definitely could. He keeps hitting him over and over and over again. If any of those was with the spear, this fight would have been done, like, hours ago. And, like, he is trying to win, right? Why doesn't he use the fucking spear? But, um, like... Well, I think Luffy's been dodging the spear up until the point where he couldn't dodge it. I guess that he dropped the spear. I mean, uh, but it's such an effective attack. Like, why just punch him when you can just keep trying with the... I mean... He is good with that spear. It gives him reach. It gives him... It's, like, extremely... Da okay, like, that's not, like, that big a deal. I, like, that makes me a little bit, like, what? I mean, that's a really effective weapon against Luffy. Maybe you should just use that. But uh, I'm willing to put that aside. I am very glad to see Katakuri trying so hard to defeat Luffy. That is what I wanted to see. I thank God that he's not, like, pitying him or babying him. And this attack on page 9, where he does this fucking rocket punch mochi explosion thing that's, like, Luffy, you know, sort of blocks, but he just fucking smashes him through half the fucking mirror world. Jesus Christ. Uh, fucking awesome, first of all, and it literally blows off his arm and he reforms one with mochi. Yeah. So fucking cool. So fucking cool. How does mochi explode, though? I do not know how he did that. I do not know how. Uh, he, like, how did he generate the combustion energy to do that? I, I don't know, hockey. I mean, how does Luffy make the fire when he does Red Hawk? Friction? Um, uh, I guess. I, don't know. I guess it's yeah. just like he makes fric mochi friction in that bubble, and it's like... I, I, I guess he does. I, I no real great explanation, no, it but doesn't I'm willing matter. to accept he's a, he's, a, he's a squidgy guy. He can do whatever he likes. <laughs> Agreed. Agreed. Uh, but so, yeah, I like Luffy's how... getting uh, a couple hits in. And he, he does get one or two hits in, but let's not forget... So many fewer than Katsukuri is getting. Yeah. Like, there is no way you can justify that Luffy is winning this fight at this point. You can't do it. He does get a couple fight hits in, though. But anyway, let, we're, yeah, we're, go, we're, we're skipping we're, away We cut over back to, to Beiji, mm -hmm. and he's got the cake, and he's going to the place. And I guess the reason we get an explanation as to why Big Mom isn't catching up, mm -hmm. it's because right. Prometheus is fat. He's sluggish. He's moving slowly. He's too big. Like, then get fucking smaller. What the fuck are you uh, doing? Yeah, Why doesn't he... Like, this feels, like, dumb and kind of put in for, like, clarification reasons because the editor said, like, this didn't make sense or something. Just get smaller. Like, just... Do, do you want to catch up, Big Mom? Do you want to <coughs> catch up? If so, catch the fuck up. Why are you so big? Um, this is dumb. Bless you. Uh, I'm dead. Oh, no. 
hang in there. Let, little let, lug. Cut, cut this out, me. <laughs> uh, she should have caught up. This is dumb, and I don't like it, but it's a small thing, I guess. I guess, like, maybe her emotions are getting out of control. She's not thinking straight. I guess that's what's going on here. Yeah, um, but we've we, it, it's been established that Prometheus and, and the guys, they, they have, like, mentalities separate from Big Mom. They can talk to the to each other... Like an argue yeah. with each other and I mean, her. You're not wrong. You're not wrong at all. But there is a connection to Big Mom, and she is in an extreme state of distress right now. So I'm just I'm, I'm throwing him a bone. Maybe that's related in some way to the fact that like, you know, because she's out of control, other things uh, are out of control. Maybe I, I, I don't, that's all I got. That's all I fucking got. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess it was just supposed to be a funny joke. Like he's too big, and he's like, oh, and they've they, they do have the fire tank. Uh, treadmill whirly bird um propeller things, things. Yeah. Uh, yeah. propellers what the fuck are they called paddles 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 yeah yeah uh, so they are faster than a normal ship faster than yeah, the average that's ship that's true i'm glad they clarified that a little bit because we did specifically comment on like why the fuck can't you just catch up but fair enough um uh, now so this is a little funny this is a little funny like okay so if you're oda and you're writing this story right now like we, the viewers, do not have access to, like, any of the fucking, like, logistical sea charts. So he can say that this journey to Cacao Island takes as long as he wants. But instead of writing it that way, he chooses to write in this little aside saying that they're going to visit Fluffy Island instead. So I wonder why he chose to do that. Because he went out of his way to do that. I wonder what's going to be on Fluffy Island. Uh, it's got to well, be something. Yeah, they've got Liquor Island. Liquor. Mm -hmm. And Which they then, were gonna going to, but now they're not, or they're going past it or something. Um, they need more time. Yeah, the time thing. Like, this is all artificially created by Oda. Like, he could say whatever he wants for time, and we have no way of, like, verifying it. So That's he's choosing true. to do I, all these I things. Guess, I guess yeah. it's, it's, because I, I, I wasn't really thinking about that, but yeah, mm -hmm. he could have made Lucker Island just fine. I think yeah. the reason is that this ship and this cake Mm -hmm. are continually going to be... They're going to be relevant uh, even after Big Mum eats it, I think. Because mm -hmm. Veggie, they, what they're going to try... They're trying to do is to drop the cake off and then sail away yeah, while Big yeah. Mum eats it. And then they'll be so. out of the arc. But I feel like what they're doing here is... Well, what Oda's doing here is implying mm -hmm. that uh, something maybe will intercept them. Like, there's still, there's still things going to happen. It if, just they're, they're not going to just get to the Fluffy Island or Puffs Island or wherever it is and then drop yeah. the cake off and then leave. There's Something's going to happen when they get there. I just feel like Oda is putting way too much fucking detail into the logistical issues like for this to be interesting. I just don't care. I don't care about any of this. Just make the things happen that you want to have happen. You don't need to explain any of this. No, well, well, I mean, he might need to explain it if they the reason... Mm -hmm. They maybe get intercepted by the Jerma or something. Mm -hmm. Is because they didn't stop in the island and then they're still on the sea, and then they get intercepted. It's like, oh, we should have like, stopped they earlier. Could've, they they could have just done that, like on the way to Liqueur Island or, or to Fluffy Island or Cacao Island, just like from the start. Okay, I'm not going to comment on this anymore. This feels like excessive and pointless filler dialogue that I don't understand the point is. At the end of this arc, I want to revisit this and see if any of this was actually for any point. Because well, it feels I feel extremely pointless to me. I feel like it, sh it, it will. Because, like, everything else has mm -hmm. come back in some small way, at least. Nothing has been pointless yet. Yeah. Yeah. I get, you know, we, this we is just, the, the plight of a weekly yet, reader. Means. We'll see. But I already feel like a lot of the information we've already been given didn't do anything. But, you know what? Uh, again, well, I'm just going to put it like, aside. I'm not going to judge. Such as what, what? What do you remember not being important that was well, introduced? Well, I just remember pages and pages of like again, like logistical details of where specific islands are, or like and why they need to go to like this Lacur. Why are they even going to Lacur Island? Aren't they just going to Cacao Island? What's even the point of no, this? No, no, Beji and the guys. They, they, they. This is where they say goodbye to the Straw Hats. You know, they got the cake. They're gonna put the cake on the island and then sail away, and then Beji will be free with Chiffon and the baby, and then they're just going to run away, because... But they're know. dropping the cake off on Cacao Island, right? No, no, they're, they're dropping it off in Liqueur Island. They, they split past. Uh, Luffy is is to be at Cacao Island. The uh -huh. Straw Hats are going there. They're going to meet up with him, and then they're going to try and run away. And now Beji doesn't need to be with the Straw Hats at all, so he's putting the cake somewhere. He's drawing Big Mom away for So them. he's putting the cake on Fluffy Island? Is that the yeah, plan? Yeah, well, now? he was going to put it on Liqueur Island, because it's close by. Right, And okay. Chiffon says, no... 
we we gotta we gotta make sure that Big Mom's far away from from the Straw Hats so that they can get away, and uh, that's okay. the reason for this change in course. I guess that the point uh, of the scene is to show uh -huh. that Chiffon loves the Straw Hats. And I Nami already and know that though. Okay, yeah, uh, so. fair enough. I I, I don't know. Uh, I'll I'll review this again next week and the week after and <laughs> to see what the fuck the point of any of this was. Um, also, uh, Big Mom's yeah. very, very fucking skinny. She's dude. getting cut. She's do clearly doing her summer cut, uh, and she's looking fierce and fabulous. So good for her. Good for her. Um, but I, then we're I right back into the fight. I wonder whether this makes boys. her weaker or whether it just it doesn't make her weaker at all, and she's still like, not, not <laughs> that she's like weak as in like they, yeah. she, anyone could defeat her right now, mm -hmm, but like, mm -hmm. um, it's just a, uh, mm -hmm. it's more of a. Um, like a just a physical thing and not actually like a power decrease uh qu a quick point remember when as a baby big mom literally went several days without eating food because there's like there's like a month long fast that they did on the giant's island and she did not get this skinny but it has been like a couple hours and now she is super skinny is it because she's in a food frenzy or something it's like just burning her up i think she's just insane yeah I guess she's just becoming insane, insane. She's becoming... I love uh, Infected Mushroom. Uh, moving on. Um, <laughs> yes. Uh, punch. punch. Punch me in the face. There you Luffy go. Luffy got punched, and then we, we cut back. So oh, we're, we're doing like, like time skips now. We're skipping around through time. I'm, I'm following. Yeah. I'm following. Oh, and here we go. Here's the panel. Oh, It's coming again. Swerve to the left, Jimbe. Swerve! And turn the wheel! Oh, God. But then here comes fetish panel. Look at that big bitch! Look at it's that big woman. old bitch. Uh, she's huge. She is huge. Why is she huge? I don't know why she's... She must have drained, like, moisture from stuff and gotten big. That's my only explanation. There's that no There's no real explanation. my favorite. <laughs> I know. She Like, she's still in proportion. She's not gross. She's just a big old bitch. Very sexual. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, she's like, damn that Jimbei. He's by the way, we're so talking about smoothie, swerving. by the way, if that wasn't clear. Uh, yes, smoothie. Charlotte smoothie. And look yes. at her big wet sword. Clearly she can do, like, wet slashes or something, and that's cool. That's very cool. Yeah, she, like it's that. like Super Mario Sunshine. She drains, she gets the water, and then she yeah. attacks with it. So you go, whoosh, you know? She get wet, and then she attack. Yes. <laughs> There's a quality commentary on the pod decast. We got it. Oh, Jimbei, turn the wheel! Oh my God! Oh, do uh, uh, can we make a cover of uh, Jesus Take the Wheel? Only it's Gene Bay Take the Wheel. That, oh my God, that should be the theme song of the podcast from now on. <laughs> Just put your faith in Gene Bay. Nothing will ever go wrong. Oh my God, Gene oh, Bay yeah, so we, fucking talented. Everyone, give, l lend me your your energy while driving. <laughs> Just put your hands in the air. Like, give me your driving energy, and then you can swerve real oh. good. What the fuck? A spirit swerve. <laughs> Everyone is sucking his dick again for literally turning the fucking wheel left. I, Jesus all right. Christ. It's, it's... I, I know it's a little more complicated than that. I know running a ship is a slightly more complicated than just turning a wheel. I'm, I, I, that's true. That's true. But look, it's, like, it's, Smoothie it's, is like, that damn Jinbei and his unbelievable godlike skill. How can he keep doing this? He's steering the fucking ship. What the it, fuck? It's, it's, it's... It's it's uh, uh, it's not this? like I don't think this is okay. <laughs> I don't mind the fact that he's swerving the ship. I just feel like the fact that they're drawing attention to it, it's Jimbei swerving it. the ship, as if either it. either as if we we you need to know that Jimbei is good, even <sighs> though we've seen that, or to 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 remind people that um, uh, uh, Jimbei is cool. This is Le unbelievably forced bullshit to try to make us like Jinbei. Like, Jinbei had already done things that were cool. Remember when he literally saved Luffy's life at Marineford? That was pretty cool. That didn't feel, like, weirdly forced at the time. But now it does. Like, stop. Just, like, just, if the, if the ship doesn't hit the thing, and they're like, oh, that was a close one. I already know Gene Bay did that. You don't yeah. need to keep telling that, yeah, me that. Yeah, that's the thing. It's like the this whole, like, all these dialogue boxes are like, yeah, we're, we're, we're looking behind to make sure we can tell Gene Bay how to steer. It's just, we kn we already know he's at the wheel. We know yeah. he's steering. Like, if he's someone just shouted out the words, Gene Bay, go left, and, like, they, and then they avoid it, and they're like, ooh, that was a close one. Like, that's all you need to say. You can even say, like, thanks, Gene Bay. But like, like the smoothie is like, oh, Jinbei's skill, damn him, 
damn him. Like, why doesn't she damn those straw hats for calling out to Jean Bay uh, so that he can avoid them? Isn't that equally difficult to turning a fucking steering wheel? I mean, why is Jean Bay so special in this case? What the? I don't get it. What's happening? This is not uh, good. Stop it, Oda. Please. It's just silly. It's just silly. There's nothing really much to say about it other than yeah. it's a funny meme, and every time it comes up, it will continue to be funny. The meme will not stop. Like, it's getting more than a meme. It's getting real. It's becoming real. Uh, but, okay, fair like, enough. Like, I'm just trying to think of, like, situations mm -hmm. where somebody doing something well is, like, mm -hmm. noticed and referenced, and when it doesn't feel... Uh, silly like this yeah and i guess it's just like whenever sanji cooks a good meal everyone's like ah yeah great but sometimes they're just they're just blinking well, remember they all the times time. remember all the times that like chopper or frankie steered the ship and no one went out of their way to say like you sure did a great job doing that like no one did that or, or, and yet or not even, gets not even all just, these compliments not even just the compliments but like the the express like oh turn left turn right and then a shot yeah. of them turning left or turning right it's it was just it's, you, you like, just it's, see the it's ship so moving you don't, it doesn't matter who's driving it it's literally it is not it's important. literally a waste of screen time like this is what you guys need to understand like Jean Bay is being so forced on us right now and they're inserting this stuff to like make him seem cool but here's the thing the things that they're giving us to like make us like Jean Bay more were things that were like already not even needing to be said because we understood they were being done and now they're being brought up all of a sudden as if Jean Bay doing them makes them like special and cool when like our other characters have been doing it all along and never got this kind of focus or praise so why the fuck should we care about it now why it, it yeah it's it's weird it's really weird it's like it's, it's like an MMO. If if you got all the classes in an MMO, and then it's mm -hmm. like, hmm, let's add a new class to this MMO, mm -hmm. and and you you've got like all these classes that have they cover all the roles and they cover all the different playstyles, and then you just mm -hmm. put this one in that is like basically another one already, yeah, or or just it's just not as cool because there's nothing left. There's no other crew position that can be like that cool. 100% redundant. He, this is so redundant, and honestly, this is a danger to the health of One Piece, because the crew already has too many members, which is why we split them up between arcs now. Like, too many members. We do not need Jean Bay. He's just wasting time on screen. Uh, I, don't even, yeah. I don't even think we don't need Jean Bay. I think we don't need a driver class. Yeah, for sure. We exactly. don't need for a sure. professional... St uh, ship steerer. I understand people can like Jean Bay way more than I do. I get it. Some people love Jean Bay. That is totally fine. Even though I find him pretty boring. If you like him, so be it. But you got to admit, a helmsman role is completely redundant and unnecessary. Frankie was doing that job 100% fine, and nobody felt the need to like say, "Man, it's... we're missing a helmsman so much right now." Never until just now, which is why it's so forced and awkward. It's weird. It's 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 like if um. Like the crow's nest guy, whoever yeah. is like at the top with the telescope looking at things and saying, "Oh, land ho!" Like that mm -hmm. was like, "Oh, you know." After Jimbe, we get <clears throat> we get the that professional guy. crow's yeah. nest guy who can see really far. But here's the and thing: he's like, like we on don't the need sunny, any of that. It's we, like we anyone can do that. We haven't seen much of this in the new world, but like Zoro already has a thing where he likes to hang out up in the crow's nest so like he's already yeah. doing that job and it'd be just like getting a new role to replace that even though someone was already doing it and we don't need it it's exactly that weird and forced and unnecessary um yeah on a, but on aside a, like, from that uh, it's a fun meme and i don't mind it's a fun i do enjoy the meme i do enjoy the meme though i think it's making one piece worse <laughs> but that's okay I'll, I'll laugh about it and enjoy it anyway yeah, Luke's I mean, getting kicked I, in the I, face again Ouch. Yeah, that that's a cool panel. That's a I cool like that panel. Look at the fucking shoe size. How big I, is that guy's foot? I mean, it's big. He's literally getting spurs in the face. And again, I really like this. Like, this is just like one snippet out of like the what's happening in the fight right now. And again, Katakuri is just dismantling Luffy, who is just missing. Like this this one panel really shows it all. Luffy is losing bad. Cannot even hit this guy most of the time. This is an absolute blowout, one-sided. Katsukuri is winning. So again, Oda, if you make Luffy win, you better fucking have a good fucking reason why. Because it does not look like he should be right now. Yes, and now we get a bit of uh, Sanji and Pudding. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Pudding's doing her, like, oh, thing. And then oh, I, I forget the slug guy. The slug guy's been here all the time, and now oh, I think he's saying boy. something. 
Yeah, N- Nitro, really? I think is his name. He hasn't. He has not done anything important. Not a single thing of relevance. He's just a slime guy who was there when Pudding was first introduced. Now he has a fedora and a face for some reason. Um, I, I, always, that's fine. I always thought he had a face. He did not have a face. I mean, when we when we first like the first time we saw Big Mom and we saw Pudding for the first time, you know, like hundreds of chapters ago, uh, I think during uh, the Fishman Island arc, um, he did not have a face at that point, or at least we could not see it. Nor did he have a fedora, but now he does, which is yeah. I, that's it, fine. It, I don't seem, care. it seems like a weird, cute character. Well, not a cute character, but like a funny little mascot guy. Mm-hmm. But he's not done a single thing. Literally at nothing. All. Literally nothing. Even the even the, the the carpet has like you know I mean it's a carpet it's a magic carpet from flying. I out. like the carpet more than the slime by quite a bit. The carpet is like useful and plot relevant, so he's cool. I, I like the carpet boy. Um, maybe maybe the slime guy is like uh, well I mean it's it's weird like if if the slime guy helped putting do her like devil fruit power and like uh, made pers- made a person like stick to all of the floor and like oh I can't move and then pudding comes and what, steals hey, their memories. Hey, what do you think about this? What do you think about this? What if the slime guy works exactly like the pensive from Harry Potter and she can pull out memories and stick them in the slime boy and they just hang out in there? Wouldn't that, that be, would cool? be cool? I mean that's a total weird fanfic I just made up, but that'd be that'd be fun. That'd be something. I- I'd like to see why he's here just at some point. I like, agree. Who is he and why and is Pudding with Pudding, him all the time? Pudding has not had her moment yet. Put, something has still got to happen with Pudding's Devil Fruit that is, again, one of the most powerful in the series and is incredibly, unbelievably good and something we need more with it or else I will just like be actually upset if we just leave and she doesn't do anything else with that power because it's so fucking good. Uh, but I think something's still coming with that. We'll see. We'll see. Um, but yes. anyway... We're, we're back to Luffy getting punched again, just getting utterly dominated again. Yeah, so he and keeps the, getting punched. He keeps getting up. Like, Oda is really, you know, beating a dead horse here, to coin a phrase. He just, like, again, just, he's, you know, Katakuri's using uh, awakened devil fruit powers, using his donuts, just dismantling Luffy again and again and again for, like, hours now. Just yeah. fucking him up. Yeah, I, I, I forgot how many hours it's been, maybe two or three yeah, something like that. And, I think uh, it started it's, like 205. It's nearly, it's nearly, I think they said 12 they were meeting. Um, I think they say like, yeah, 12 or like 1 a.m. or something like that. Some, It's pretty close, though. It's pretty close. Yeah. I think there might be information here that we can check that out at. But so all the boys are meeting up. What island are they on? Is this is this chocolate land? This is, is Kakao this? Island, yeah. This is where right. the mirror is. This is where um, right. the, the Straw Hats are planned to sail to. Mm-hmm. So they've got a lot of strength. They've got all these. I I, I really like that they they mention in the little uh, square boxes like the Charlotte family, blah blah blah. These people, it. these people, etc. Like there's so many of these. There's fucking so people. many of these fucking babies. It's nuts. I re- oh I love this fucking pirate crew so much. So much personality. Um, so yeah. they broke all the mirrors and we got. I mean, who do we got here? We got ovens here. Uh, just Charlotte family sons, 36 to 40. Charlotte family daughters, 30 to 34 for a total of 10. Uh, you got C, uh, the Charlotte family 33rd son, Raisin, who looks like a cool spiky sword boy. Uh, 35th son, Ewin. We've got 32nd son, Brownie. Uh, 27th daughter, Jacone. And um, out of fucking nowhere, 25th son, former sweet commander, Snack. Here, here he is, guys. Yeah, uh, he's remind just me who here. This guy is. is he is he the guy who who um da, uh, lost to Urouge or At, something? That's correct. He lost to Urouge. And this guy had a bounty of 600 million berries and lost to Urouge. How fucking strong is Urouge? Jesus Christ. Well, he's a jacked boy. He's a very big strong boy, but I mean we haven't really seen him like do much. But uh I hope that we do. I hope that we do. But look at what the fuck even is Snack? But I, I, he's I really got want to see Snack's scarf, do some stuff. and he's got a small face. I think I like that. And his it's... hair is like it, his hair is bigger than his head. <laughs> he's, got, he's got his nose poking out there. It's his true. hair is covering his eyes. That's what I think he is. I think we're gonna see. Uh, oh, and he's saying like Ugh, one of the worst generation, uh, which is relevant because he lost a fight recently and got demoted yeah. as a result to Uruj, one of the worst generation, beating him. So he's looking for blood. I think we're gonna see some cool stuff from him. At least I hope so. God, there's um, so there's so many. I just want to like how mm-hmm. how is anything going to go right after the Straw Hats arrive? There's going to be some emotional thing. Either like Big Mom eats the cake and it just decides to have a party, 
and it immediately all tensions are out the window and everyone just has fun. Or like Katsukuri and Luffy do something where like Katsukuri respects Luffy so much that Katsukuri like stands up for him. Uh, I th- all right. Mm-hmm. I, both of those. First one. Yeah. Uh, Big Mom is going to be on a completely different island, very far away. Specifically, so far away that she could not then eat eat the cake and then go and attack the Straw Hats, uh, if, according to Shifon. Well, so she's going to be mean, real far away. Even if she's like, "Ah, I love this cake. Let's all be friends." They can't communicate because the Sea Slug people are all down for the count. So that. Even if Big Mom is like happy with the straw hats and she's fine with it, I don't think none that's, of these I don't people think are going to know. Correct. I mean, it says it's oh, so. Uh, so just looking at the next page, it says it's twelve oh five and it's one hour left until the rendezvous on Cacao Island. I'm like ninety nine percent sure that the whole deal point ultimately was that everyone would meet on Cacao Island, including the cake with Big Mom. Is that not accurate? No, no that's not accurate. Hmm. When, if you go well, back fuck. to the chapter where they switched the cake. Veggie yeah. said he's going to take the cake away so Big Mom will be drawn away. Okay. And then she's going to be on now. It was going to be Liquor Island. Now it's yeah. going to be Puffs Island or whatever. Oh, uh, just to have her be further away. Okay. I think so I'm that when she eats now. it and gains her strength back, she can't immediately go and kill the Straw Hats. Um, here's an idea. Just don't give her the cake so she doesn't get her strength back. I mean, there's an idea. Well, no, Sanji said, you got to give it to her, because... Because uh, why? Because why, exactly? Because she's hungry? She's going to murder you! Okay, but I know he doesn't care. Um, Sanji's, Sanji's okay, an honorable lad. why is lad. anyone like, else she's helping She's a hungry him. person. Like, okay, you know what? Whatever. <laughs> anyway. So, yeah, like, if she likes it, none of these people at the mirror in, on Kakao Island are going to know that until a little bit later. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I don't know how that can happen. Yeah, I, um, I mean, she might just, I don't know, teleport over real fast with her the, regained I, strength, maybe, I or feel something. Like, I feel like there's there's a very, very slim chance that the Germa could jump in and save them and steal Luffy away. Like, I, what yeah. I'm imagining happening is that Luffy loses or wins or whatever, and then Katagori and him both come out of the mirror world with mm-hmm. Brulee or whatever. Mm-hmm. And and then Luffy's surrounded. Like, even if he beats Katagori, he can't fight all these extra guys, so he's lost. So and then the right. Germa have to come in and swoop in and and, and let them escape. Um, uh, the Germa definitely have a role to play still. That's definitely true. It's definitely true. And the Straw Hat Pirates are going to arrive, uh, you know, around the same time. Right. They're going to put Luffy on the boat and they're going to sail away. And I guess they might just escape. That uh, might be yeah, it. That might be it. I mean, they've got what they came for. You know, they got Sanji and they got the uh, red Pontiglyph. So they're good if they can just escape at this point. But it's just there's so much strength so much there going on, in, though. In, yeah. in Big Mom's army and like all these kids and like how yeah. how is it gonna work out? How Something are they gonna just run gonna away? Happen. Even if the Germa are there, what's gonna happen? There's only like five of them that are really like strong. They've got they've got a bunch of jacked little little guys, and on their snail ship. But I don't know. I don't know, man. We'll we we'll just have to see. Um. So, back to the business. We're in the mirror world again. 12.05, one hour left until the rendezvous on Cacao Island. And here we've got big old mouth Katakuri. Ah. He's just yelling at Luffy. Look at the size of that fucking mouth. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Luffy is just, again, he's, at this point he's just on the ground dead. He's just like, is this, is it finally over? He's like, he's like mad at Luffy. He's like actually mad at him for like falling. Like what's going through Katakuri's head right now? I feel like there's some weird emotional shit going on in him where he, like, like he's just lost so much through this fight because, like, his crew is exposing him as a freak. Like, he, everyone's seen, like, how embarrassing and shameful he is now. Like, he's lost so much uh, during the course of this fight. And I feel like he's, like, he feels like he's, he's owed, like, a real challenge from Luffy. Like, he wants to be pushed to the limit and know it was all, like, for something. This is a very complicated thing going on with this character right now. And it's very interesting. Like, Luffy gets up, and he's, like, excited about it. He's like, yes, keep getting up, keep fighting back. As he's, like, shaking. Like, Katsukuri is definitely feeling it at this point. Yeah. Uh, I mean, obviously. But uh, there Luffy goes, getting back up. And I know he's like, if after this, you'll... So Luffy is definitely attempting a final last resort sort of thing. And the, my question is... So, okay. So, I mean, we might as well just talk about this. He's like, this is it. Here I go. Gear 4th, Snake Man. So, Snake Man. when Luffy did Gear 4th before, he specifically said Bound Man. 
So, like, that was a little sort of subcategory under Gear Fourth, as his, like, bouncy form was Bound Man. And then before, like, the fat version, I think it had, like, some other name or something. Gorilla Man. Full... What was it? Tank Man. I think it was something like that. Tank Man sounds right. I believe it was Tank Man. And he, I, I, you know Luffy. Maybe he made that up on the spot. That's fine. But this Snake Man is clearly something that he's, like, thought about and, like, planned. Because he's like, okay, this is my last effort. Here I go, unleashing my final weapon. Quick question. Why didn't he do this literally any time up to this point? I think it's yeah. because mm-hmm. uh, it's experimental, and if he does it, he might just fall dead. Like, well, not dead, mm-hmm. but like, um, if he does this and it doesn't work, then he's lost yeah. the fight, and this is the last resort. Like, if he can't mm-hmm. win with this, uh, or like, um, if he uses this, he's gonna be so depleted of energy. Mm-hmm. Uh, then there's no chance he's going to do anything. Well, like the last time he used Gear 4, uh, we definitely saw, you know, when he, like, reverted back and he, like, you know, he, he wasn't able to, like, fight. He just had to run away for a while until he came back to the Mirror World because he couldn't... I, I forget. After I think after he loses Gear 4, he can't stretch for a while or something. I can't he remember. can't use hockey. He can't use hockey. That's right. That That's what it is, uh, which obviously he really needs to if he wants to deal any damage on Katakuri. Um, so, yeah. I, I, it makes it, like, if he had used Gear 4 in, like, the couple of hours leading up to this, and that didn't do the trick, then, like, he would have been out of hockey and, you know, probably completely fucked, because, uh, yeah, but, but instead, I guess he was kind of playing the odds and hoping he'd be able to beat him without having to risk using Gear 4 and failing, but now he's, like, he is really, truly on his last legs, so he's got no choice but to just put it all into one final attack with this Snake Man shit. So yeah. what, I, what do you yeah. think Snake Man is going to be? It's going to be, uh, I mean, I was kind of thinking that it's going to be some sort of like, I mean, in my head right now, I'm picturing like Luffy's limbs getting like long and noodly in such a way that he's able to like more easily dodge things. I, I think it's going to be tied in with this whole observation hockey thing. I think it's going to be about as sort of a dex build. I think he's spec- specking into a dex build right now with this Snake Man thing. Um, I, I had yeah. in my head the, I mean, one of the, the jokey thing I was thinking is yeah. he's just going to lie on the floor and then just sne- like he's going to have his arms and his legs like <laughs> at, tightly at his packed sides. to his side and he's going to do a snake thing really fast. He's going to bite <laughs> Katakuri on the leg. I was sort of um, thinking that there's probably going to be a joking thing too of it, but I was thinking that he'll have like I mean, a really I ho- long I neck. hope it looks completely ridiculous. Me too, uh, as, is, as we all that's, want. That's what, that's what uh, you know, the things have to be. I'm hoping um, that he just puts his head on a really long neck, and he's just like, didn't, you know, kind of wiggling his head around. Then he can just around. get sliced easier. Oh no! But it's okay. Katsukuri, for some reason, isn't using bladed weapons, even though they're literally his um, weapon of choice. <laughs> what if? Okay. All right. What if? Yeah. Uh, he stretches all his limbs mm. so that he's just really tall and thin, and then he whips his hands and feet around like a like a like a whip. Okay. He's just really tall, and he's just <laughs> slapping him from a distance. I mean, this is all retarded, <laughs> and I don't see how any of this would help. Yeah, uh, this is this is because I can't imagine what the form of a snake would have to do with beating Katakuri right now. Yeah. When Gear Fourth normal would not work. Yep. Because he, he does punches, and a snake doesn't even fucking have arms. I feel like there's been so much talk about observation hockey, Ken Boon Shoku hockey, up to this point, that it's got to be related to that in some way. It's got to be. It's clearly like a hockey thing. This fight has all been about hockey. It's going to be something with this. It's going to be something with observation hockey. That I, I feel strongly that that's going to be the case. And I think that means some sort of, like, dex dodgy build. And Luffy's going to real quick do some sort of, like... He's going to accelerate real fast and be able to, like, avoid the attacks. Uh, and somehow... But, like, I don't, like but he's got to deal second. damage. He's got to be able to hit this guy real hard real fast. Or else he's going to fucking lose. I don't know. I, don't I mean, know, I feel like Gear Forth is already that. I, like, he I agree. moves real fast and punches real hard. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's what I would do if I were him right now, but... You know, we can't even speculate. We have no idea. I yeah. think it's going to be one related thing, to One thing hockey. I, I want to I wanna yeah. imagine is mm-hmm. in my head, like, that the form of the snake, whatever he takes, is mm-hmm. sort of inspired by the snake people Boa from Hancock. Amazon Lily. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yep, yep. It's just like, ah, you're, you're a snake. 
Uh, uh, that's a good attack. I'll do that. Oh, maybe he'll have a little future. flashback, and it's like, this was inspired by that weird girl who keeps touching me and talking to me, and he's, like, imagining, like, blushing Boa Hancock being all And then, And then his, the snake is that he gets his dick out, and he smacks Katakori oh, right upside like, the head, yeah. and Katakori's like, the, oh, gross. The, you know, he's saying snake man. It's like, yeah, the, the, the lady snake taught me this technique, and it's just sex that he had with her endlessly over and over again. And so he <laughs> and just pulls he out his dick to and have goes, sex fucking Katakori with, in the no. ass. Oh, that's what he wants. Only Katakuri Curry would fucking love it. Um, He'd get his donut yeah. hole ready. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> and with that, we've lost every single viewer. It's over. Every single subscriber and <laughs> dollar we do is gone, confiscated by the police. Um, well, that's the end of the chapter right there. It was a snake man. Gear fourth. Oh, yeah. well, oh we'll I, I just time. wanted to say th yeah. th there was a weird thing with the dialogue that I couldn't figure out. Mm. I think somebody explained it. What's that? Uh, but I, I forgot. It. Well, they're both like predicting each other's uh, conversation. So like, if oh, you read it, it doesn't happening? really make sense. But that's the like category is reading the future, and Luffy's also reading the future. I think, and it's if you if you lay it all out, it makes sense. But I can't be bothered to f think. About What's it. the matter, Straw Hat? Is this? The end. Oh, right. Yes, rise to the challenge. I'm going to end it. If after this, you still... You've already given your answer. This is it. Yeah. Gear forth. Blah, blah, blah. Um, I, yeah, this is kind of confusing. Uh, I don't really get it. I should probably read the Jemini's box and see if that, like, helps at all. Jemini's box seems to be more confusing. Really? Um, That's not But good. I think that the, the <laughs> idea is... Uh -huh. Is that, um... I think it's supposed to be not as complicated as it seems. I think Katakuri is just like, okay, you're going to do Gear Forth again. He's like, yes, I'm going to go do Gear Forth, but it's just jumbled up because they're both reading the future. Fair fair guess. Fair guess. Um, well, in any case, uh, that's about it, everybody. Uh, I guess we're all done for now. We'll yes. see you next week. Oh, my God, we did a fucking hour again? Gee, I thought this was going to be like nothing. Well, Jesus we, Christ. we spent like, like 20 minutes before we got to the chapter. That's true, which was good shit, which was good shit. But yeah. uh, nobody nobody goes as in-depth as the podcast, for yeah, true. The best just like, podcast in the world. Which is just what uh, Katakuri is going to be saying next week about Luffy's dick. Nobody goes as deep. No one's as in-depth as your snake man dongus, Luffy. That's... That's the real shit. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thanks for listening, everybody. Oh, uh, uh, hey, uh, again, we said at the beginning, but you should join our uh, One Piece podcast Discord. Uh, link yes. in the description for that. You should uh, pledge to us on our Patreon so that, first of all, you get access to the secret chats in the Discord. Um, which we definitely use. Which we definitely use excessively. If you want to find One Piece and get to Raftel, you've got to give us money on the Discord. <laughs> uh, and uh, what else? I guess that's it. I guess that's it. Yes. Patreon but, and Discord and indeed. subscribe, like, favorite, share with your friends. Yes, all those put it things. Up, put it on the Reddit. Everybody should post this on the Reddit as a separate Reddit post so that it gets spam and then get banned. <laughs> Good idea. We all want to get banned. Uh, hey, man, feel free to post it to any Reddits you see fit. Seems, seems reasonable to me. It's a one-piece discussion. All right, well, thanks for joining, everybody. We'll see you next week, hopefully. Looks like it. And uh, have a beautiful day. Bye. Goodbye.